All right, everyone, what's up, guys? So I just got here to John Wayne Airport, finally went through security. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my terminal real quick. And what I actually did is that yesterday on Instagram, I actually went ahead and I did a Q&A, and I told a bunch of people to ask me a bunch of questions you want me to answer. And so while I'm traveling to San Francisco to my actual, my dad's house, and my goal is to actually answer all those questions while I'm heading to back home. So I'll go ahead and answer right now, and I'll see you guys when I get there. Hi right, guys, so I'm here sitting down right now. There's honestly a lot of people around me. So it's a little awkward doing this in front of a lot of people. But the first question I actually want to ask is actually from Simon underscore Bo. And the first question that he asked me was, um, what are the best and worst things about being a coder and a YouTuber? Um, I think one of the, first of all, the I guess I'll go with the hard thing, the hardest thing about being someone who professionally programs for a living and someone who has a YouTube channel is that um, I could honestly be probably five times better at coding as I am now. Um, but because I put in so much time into YouTube, uh, what that does is it actually prevents me from growing. And that's one of the biggest things that, uh, that's what I often think about, to be honest, almost every single week. I would constantly think about if I didn't have this channel, uh, how much less, how much better would I be as a programmer? But one of the best things though, to be honest, the pro of having a YouTube channel and being a professional coder, the main thing is the fact that, number one, I could interact with a lot of coders. And usually as a programmer, the only people you meet up with are at meetups or the only people you really talk to are at your office. But for me, I have a Discord channel with thousands of people in it. I have people who, thousands of people who comment on my videos every single day that I can interact with. And the biggest benefit is that because I have a coding channel, I am forced to be, to keep up to date with the latest technology, which has honestly helped me a lot in regards to what is really in demand now and what is not. Um, and other than that, man, I mean, there's a lot more, but that's what I'm talking about right now. But anyways, I need to work on some things right now, so I'll talk to you guys when I get in the plane. So I just got here in the plane. I'm heading to San Francisco right now and I'll see you guys when I get there. Alright guys, what is up YouTube? Good morning. It is Thanksgiving Day. I hope everyone is having a good time today by the time you see this. It'll probably be the weekend already. But I'm here in San Francisco. It is good to be here, man. Sorry, I didn't film last night in the bar station. I didn't feel like it would be wise to take out my expensive camera in a train where there's not too many, you know, when well, there's some sketchy people around. So I figured I'll just film this morning and continue with the Q&A. So I'm here actually with my dad. We're at this Filipino grocery store right now called Mabuhai. He's getting some Filipino food for tonight, for Thanksgiving tonight. So yeah, anyway. All right, so here's a good question that was actually asked by Kev underscore 1012. And Kev asked the question, as a front-end developer, what challenges did you face when you first started working? I think that's a very good question. Um, it has been two and a half years since I first started working on my original job. But man, the challenges, um, I think the biggest thing that I face, the biggest challenge I faced as a front-end developer at my first job was that I knew literally nothing right um at least for me 
I've been studying code for only like three months. I've only made one website to be honest and I had no idea what I was doing. And when I first got hired, the biggest challenge, the number one challenge that I faced was believing in myself. So I constantly uh, doubted myself every single day. Like I, I didn't know if I can really do it. I kept wondering every day for the next six months to be honest, actually almost a year probably, where I would wonder if I would still have a job. And those were things that were on my mind consistently every single day for almost a year and that stress that you feel and and knowing that you're so new to the industry and you really don't know anything and so what I kept doing within that first year is every single day studying code every single week and I remember stressing out just going home to study code every weekend because I didn't know what I was doing I was only coding in HTML and CSS at that time and and that's easy when I think about now like everything I did before is nothing compared to what I do now right but all of that stuff because it was so new I was always like stressed out to be honest that was honestly probably the biggest challenge just believing in myself because a lot of people do doubt themselves too so all right my dad's here I gotta go see you guys later peace <laughs> what's up bro hola Happy Thanksgiving, by the way. Happy Thanksgiving, brother. What are we gonna do, bro? We're gonna go bowling. We're gonna go bowling? Yep. I'm the older guy, so I sit in the front. <laughs> you ready to go bowling? No. You're gonna I'm see gonna be rusty. You're gonna be rusty? Yeah. If you guys don't know, my brother is actually a prof He's a professional? No. Oh, he's, nah, nah, he's a wannabe professional bowler. Not yet. Right? You got Coll a scholarship? Collegiate. Collegiate. Yeah. Coll Collegiate. You're, you're um, Toothpaste bowler. <laughs> what do they call that? <laughs> An athletic scholarship. Yes, you got an athletic scholarship for just standing and throwing a ball. <laughs> Easiest thing ever. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall But tonight I'm letting it go Spend my coin for sure I'm gonna be myself Or I could be someone else Oh, look at that! Six strikes in a row! Oh my gosh! Good job! What I do when I'm out so Try not to hold me down Feel alive Alright guys, I'll see you guys later. My camera's actually about to die. I forgot to charge it last night. So we're about to be finished bowling right now. And I'll see you guys when we get back to the house. Peace. Alright everyone, I'm back here at the airport right now. It's been the end of my trip. I know I wasn't able to film a lot when I was in San Francisco, but my main goal the last couple days was to spend as much time as I possibly can with my family. So before I head back to LA today, I'm about to, I'm here in the airport. I'm about to fly back right now. But before I head back to LA today, I'm gonna go ahead and answer the rest of the questions that I have on here that I wasn't able to answer on my trip here. And uh, that was my goal, but I wasn't able to do it, so I apologize about that. So let me go ahead and answer the rest of the questions I have on here, and I'll see you guys on the next video. All right, some people, people always ask me this every single time, but I figured I might as well answer it here. Someone asked me the question, how much do you make on YouTube? That's a very good question. I could say this, it's enough to where I don't have to worry about car payments anymore. It actually pays the majority of my rent as well when I do get like a really nice apartment. That's all I'm gonna tell you. O'Reilly asked me, uh, what is the biggest mistake I made when I started learning code? The biggest mistake I made when I started learning code was, um, to answer a good question. The biggest mistake I, I made from learning code, I think was just my fear to learn difficult things. It was mainly because of my pride, uh, because I, I became a developer in three months. But the one thing that slowed me down a lot and the big mistake I made was I was too afraid to, to take on bigger challenges because I thought that would prove that I wasn't meant to be a programmer. And so what I do encourage a lot of people to make as you get into the industry is make sure that you continue to challenge yourself, make sure you continue to do hard challenges, make difficult projects. Even though it sounds like something you can do, I can guarantee you 100% you can do it, but you'll never be able to get better unless you challenge yourself on things that you can't do yet. And what people tend to do is that they want to be comfortable. They want to stick to things they already know, but it's very important and it's vital to the life as a software developer, web developer, that you continue to push yourself and do things that you're not really good at and that's one of the ways that that's one thing I honestly really do 
do regret. Okay, next question. Okay, uh, Jed is ask. He says, "I'm a newbie. Is it wise to just focus on back end when I don't really have interest on front end?" Yeah, that's very wise. I mean, if you have no interest, why learn it, right? I, I think back end's totally fine. Um, ASV PX Angels asking Mac or Windows computers for software developers, dude. Whatever you want, man. <laughs> whatever you want. Um, the same person asked, what got you your developer job? My new one, I guess, and how was the interview? Um, I think what got me my, my new developer job, yes, I had two years of experience under my belt as a developer, but even more than that, um, what is it that got me my, that job? I honestly think it was my personality. Um, because of the culture we have at this company, I think that's one thing that they're really focusing on is culture more than even just skill. Skill is important, but skill is something that you can grow as well. As long as the skill is good enough there and the culture fit, and you fit with the culture, that personality you have is big. And I think that's why it's very important. Even as developers, a lot of people tend to be very quiet and they don't know how to speak or they don't know how to express their thoughts. And I think that's something that we should be able to learn how to do as well. Uh, but more than anything, yeah, I think I just, I got along with the company. Which is hard to get, a web design job or a web developer job, they're both, I think, pretty difficult, but they are there are less web designer jobs, UI, UX jobs out there compared to coding jobs, I'm not gonna lie. Foundation versus Materialize, Materialize. ET4 president said, asked, what are your thoughts about working a developer job remotely? Um, I don't know, I mean, I've done remote stuff in the past, working for my last job, and I, I do like working from home. But for me personally, I enjoy coming to the office. I enjoy working with my boss. I enjoy working with the other developers. Yeah, I enjoy coming to the office and I just like that environment and just, you know, when I'm at work, I'm in work mode. When I'm at home, I'm in work mode for like YouTube and all the other stuff. But I know I'm the kind of person where I like to talk to people. I, I like socializing. So I like coming to the office, but I don't know when I have kids in the future, I might want to have a remote job because I want to be home with the kids more often. We'll see about that when I get there. Okay, um, Russ Force says, decisive question, view or react? I like view because it's very easy to work with, but react is much more in demand. React, there are more jobs out there for react, but at the end of the day, companies will hire you, whether you know Vue, React, or Angular, why? At the end of the day, what they want to know is that you know how to work with an actual JavaScript framework or library. All right guys, last question. I'm gonna go ahead and do the last question for today because my plane's about to actually board, so I'm gonna go ahead and head out. Um, last question, someone asked me, Pugless. Pugless, I think his name is. He asked, what are your goals for 2019? My goals, um, my goals for 2019, is to actually be good at the lab stack while at the same time learning the MERN stack on the side. Um, I really want to learn CodeWall and React and Node.js. I do want to learn Express.js, but at the same time, as we do use the lab stack, that's something that I do want to get more comfortable with as well. Um, it's going to be a lot of work, especially with doing YouTube on the side, but I think it'll be worth it in regards to bringing value to a company too and just as a developer. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I'm going to go head out. Everyone is staring at me right now, so I'll see you guys later. This is Krishan. It's Life for Developer, and I'm out. Peace.